to have the music jump off the stage. I have always been interested in history ever since I can remember, since I was a child, and it was kind of in normal or natural for me to go into historically informed performance of music. When I went to the Royal Academy of Music, I was a bit of a square peg in a round hole. You know, I was a good violinist, I was efficient, played in tune, nice sound, but I couldn't, I actually hated to play really, really loudly. I, I, I felt it was cruel to the violin. I liked to play more elegant. Um, and when I found the Baroque violin, I was just so happy because this was the sound that I always wanted. I did my first sessions playing Baroque violin when I was 20 with Chris Hogwarts. And uh, the attitude then was that it was like removing the old varnish from an old master, removing all the grime and seeing the bright colors. So initially, we didn't really do very much with the music. We just took off all the sort of 19th and 20th century accoutrement. I'm always saying to people, musicians are actually very intelligent people. They have a lot of imagination and you, you expect them to sit in some practice room for six hours and learn to play back black dots. It's not fair. But when you give them all the historical background and s cultural background and um, the history of society and the history of instrument making and all these extra l levels and it makes music much more interesting for everybody. Very young Sebastian and kind of, you know, God punished me and I denied Peter and I'm a bad person and <laughs> I will be better. I think this is... I'm going to be better! Go on, but I'm going to be a better person. But then I think it's just like, oh, well, let's go and have a drink. <laughs> So over the last, what is it, 40 years, um, what's happened is we've rediscovered how to interpret rock music. You know, in 1973, when I did my first CD with Christopher Hogwood, we weren't interpreting, not at all. We were just reading the treatises, we were doing the bowing rules, we weren't using vibrato, we used the right pitch, we were using gut strings and, and baroque bows, but we weren't, we didn't understand enough. Now it's developed much more and we understand that, I mean, if you imagine a baroque altarpiece, I remember seeing a most amazing altar in Graz in Austria, and it was all gilded and it had the curlicues going up and up and up, all these little, spirals of things and it was just magnificent and that you know that's supposed to have an emotional impact baroque music is supposed to have an emotional impact if you think about the b minor mass and the trumpets and everything it's just like that gilded amazing altarpiece in graz it makes you full of awe and uh, sets your imagination going <laughs> From 1981 until 1989, barring one year, I used to teach every summer in Vancouver, British Columbia. And what happened was that all the violinists who were interested in Baroque music from all the way down the West Coast used to come and study with me. So I knew, all, I knew players in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle. And there were two particular from Portland, David Kerr and Laura Cunningham. After a while, they decided to start their own orchestra. They managed to get this orchestra off the ground. 
they managed to raise money, they managed to get a board, and they actually got Tom Copeman to sort of sign up as the artistic advisor. Finally, around, what would it be, 94, um, they decided they wanted to have a, a permanent artistic director. And because they'd known me from all those years teaching in, Va in Vancouver, BC, I was on the shortlist and I came and I did some trials and I got the job. When I started with Portland Baroque Orchestra 22 years ago, it was a bunch of complete fanatics. Those people were so enthused and so committed, very, very exceptional people um, who would put their heart and soul into this project. I mean, they really did. They, they did fundraisers, they did dinners, and they did all sorts of extraordinary things and put their lives on hold to a certain extent to get this going. And I think that fed through over all this time. It's an orchestra that's full of commitment. Everybody feels valued. And that's what's so special about a small orchestra like this is that you know that there's no dross, you know, there's no hangers on. It's everybody has to really contribute 100%. I think the magic part of it is that it's small. I, I, you, I don't think you'd ever get the same feeling in the symphony orchestra, but you know, when you've got a small group like this, uh, what you'd call a chamber orchestra size, everybody knows they're valuable. I think music is a way of getting in touch with the best side of our nature. People often say, what's the future of historical performance? And, you know, haven't we come to the end of how far we can go? Actually, we haven't. When I look to the future, I feel that the legacy of Portland Baroque Orchestra is going to be a lot of young people who are going to look at classical music in a different way. I would like to make our music less white. And, you know, I would, I'm looking forward to having Hispanic and African-American musicians playing in our orchestra. Musicians have a vocation. And um, sometimes I think that we have to do music because it's the only th way that we can make sense of life. But I think that while it helps us to make sense of life, it helps our audience to make sense of life. It puts us in touch with um, some kind of contentment, some kind of feeling that things are in balance, that the world is not totally skewed. Um, and actually, maybe the other thing is that it binds us together. When we're all in here and the orchestra's playing and the audience is listening and it's going really well, you feel like there's this general consciousness that you're, you're all bound together and aware of each other and, and you know, all those good things of tolerance, compassion, um, they exist in this space and they feed us for all those other occasions when we feel so contrary. It's very gratifying to me Portland audience loves us and supports us and gets something from us that's real that that uh, reassures me that I am doing the right thing that's that's the significant thing that we're all we're all responsible we're in it together